So I am going to do this. I am going to write my NeoVim config from scratch. No, I mean, really from scratch. All right, so this is going to include my favorite plugins that I use, the best remaps of your lifetime, LSP, tree sitter, some basic editor settings, the whole nine yards. And I'm going to do it from the vanilla NeoVim experience all the way up to the GigaChad NeoVim experience. So I hope that you've already pre-liked the video right there. Just press it right now. And once you do that, you can keep on going down. You can go check out my new VimRC on the GitHub link provided. All right, so I guess the first thing I need to do is create the NeoVim directory, CD into it, and open up Vim. Now, this is a terrifying screen right here. This is the default NetRW experience, which is the file tree by Vim along with the default color scheme, which is, I mean, Cyan's never looked this good, okay? 2023 is gonna be the year of Cyan. I can feel it right here. If you don't know where to put this folder, this NeoVim folder, just type in colon HRTP. You'll see right here at the very top, this is where NeoVim's going to look. And this bottom one right here, very important. We're gonna use it as well. All right, so the first thing we have to do is press percent sign because that means create file because that's the mnemonic that was chosen. <laughs> I don't know. Anywho, just creating a knit.lua. This will be the first place that NeoVim looks. I'm going to just type in print hello. If you're not familiar with Lua, it's a dead simple language. Look at that. Hello bottom corner. Now let's press D. This will create a directory, not delete directory. Probably would have gone with a capital D myself. All right, so let's create the Lua directory. Any directory within the Lua directory is requirable by Lua. So let's press enter, go right into the Lua directory, press D again. I'm gonna create the prime engine directory. You create whatever you want to. Press enter again, percent sign, yep, create file, init.lua, go in here, print hello from the prime engine. Then I'm gonna press colon, capital E X. That stands for explore, brings back up that beautiful cyan net RW. Hit enter on the two dots, hit enter on the two dots, go back to our original one and require the prime engine. Remember, init.lua is like index.html. It's just like the one it goes to. Quit, open, beautiful. We got something good going here. So now let's make Vim usable. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna add a remap to make it really easy to go back into netrw because I don't wanna have to press colon ex enter. I want something that feels a little bit faster to me. So I'm gonna go down to Lua. I'm gonna go into the primogen and I'm gonna press percent sign to create that file again and call it remap.lua. In here, I'm going to type in vim.g.map leader equals a space and then vim.keymap set in normal mode leader, ah, leader pv vim command ex. So what's going on here? If you're not familiar with remaps, effectively, while in normal mode, if I press leader pv, it will execute this command for me. Leader, of course, is the space. All right, just to test this out, let's go colon so, this sources this file right here, and then space PV. Perfect, it's looking good. Now the thing we can't forget to do is go over to my init file in the primogen directory and go require the primogen remap. By having this right here, it will automatically get sourced every single time NeoVim gets opened. So quit, reopen it back up, hello the primogen, hello, go into here, leader PV, awesome. Now we're cruising. So the next thing we need to do is to get a plugin manager and a fuzzy finder because I just feel like I need to be able to hop between files quickly and nothing does that better than a fuzzy finder. Except Harpoon. Shh. All right, so to get a plugin manager, all we need to do is go to the internet, go to packer.neovim, and from in here, we can just copy this lovely command and just put it directly into our shell. Lovely. Next, go back to Packer, grab these couple lines right here, copy them, go back to Vim. Now, we're going to go into Lua, into the primogen, and we're going to create one more file called Packer.Lua. Let's paste in what we got from the internet, and that, there we go, and the function do SO to source it. Uh-oh, we hit an error. You know why? We haven't quit Vim, reopen it back up, go into Lua, go all the way to here, now do it. Awesome. We just installed Packer, so didn't know about it. So now let's type in Packer Sync just to give it a go. Look at that, we got ourselves a plugin manager. Let's close it, let's go back to the internet, let's go to telescope.neovim. It is a fuzzy finder built by Telescopic Johnson and maintained by Connie. The true hero, really, the true hero. Let's scroll on down, copy this Packer statement right here, 
go down to an empty line, paste it in. I press equal to uh, align it nicely. Re-SO to shout it out again. And then, of course, pack or sync one more time. And look at that. Telescope is now installed. But we don't have any ways to pull it up without simply typing in the command. So let's add some remaps. So leader PV brings back up NetRW, back one, back one, create a directory called after. Go into after, create a directory called plugin. Go into plugin, create telescope.lua. And now let's go back to Lua and grab these top two lines right here in the Lua section. Copy it, paste it. Let's have our own key bindings. I want PF for project file. It's going to use find files. And then we're going to do one more. I'm going to jump in here and go CP for fuzzy finding. Go FF right here and get files. What this will do is allow me to have a git file search and then an all file search since right now i'm not in a git repository i want to be able to just simply grab every file and that is find files right here but there's times where you only want to look at just files that are in git it's just much faster think of node modules the heaviest thing in the universe all right so let's add one more remap this one is super useful let's actually i'm going to yank it from this one and go over here and let's go ps for project search and instead of using this let's actually use a function so i'm just going to write straight up code to just execute when i press this inside of here i'm going to take in built in and do grep string providing a search term which is going to be a vim function input and i'm going to provide grep just like that boom put a little semicolon at the end even though i didn't need to do a little so and now i can type in leader pf look at that very horribly colored fuzzy finder let's go to packer wonderful i can even do leader ps which is going to give me a little grep string down there and let's find everywhere that we say the word requires look at that we only have it in one little place right there that's pretty cool right and then of course control p it airs we're not in it we're not in the git directory this doesn't count correct no it doesn't count but honestly the cyan's not working for me okay i thought cyan was going to be 2023 it's not going to be so let's add a color scheme all right, so I chose Rose Pine for NeoVim. I'm gonna come down here, copy this line right here for the Packer install, paste it in equal AP for that beautiful eight space indenting, do a little SO, do a little Packer sync, watch it go, and fantastic. Rose Pine is installed, lost the waifu in the background, probably gained your subscription because you're so blown away at this point. Thank you. I'd like to say thank you. Especially when I set up that LSP. I know you're going to like the video. All right, so I see two things kind of wrong here. First off, our transparent background went away. And second off, the colors are just really not that great. So let's fix those two things. So the first one's not too hard to fix. Leader PV, jump back here, jump back here, go into the after, go into plugin, create a file called colors.lua. Okay, so we need to do two things. One, we're going to set the color scheme. And two, we're going to set a transparent background. So I'm going to create a global function. I know you don't have to do it this way. There's plenty of better ways to do it, but this is the way I have chosen. I'm going to make sure I color it, right? We're going to color the we're going to color those pencils. I'm going to say color equals color or rose pine. So that way I always have a default color. So if it's just called from anywhere, we're always getting that nice rose pine experience. Vim command color scheme. Ah, color. And then now we need to actually set the background to be transparent. So I'm going to go like this. Vim API NeoVim set HL. Zero is just for the global space. So every window gets this. I'm going to pass it normal. That just means like the thing. This is just Vim. Why is it called normal? I don't know. It's been around probably longer than I have. Do a little background equals none, except of course, lowercase. Then copy that, do it one more time and do it for float. That way it also happens for floats. And then give this a little shout out. Beautiful. But the colors are still not right. We need Tree Sitter. If you're not familiar with Tree Sitter, Tree Sitter allows for an amazingly fast parsing of your code that's in your editor right now. And it builds an incremental tree. So every change just, you know, changes one small part of it. And it provides highlighting. Vim's working on indenting. And it's incredibly fast. It puts VS Code to shame. And yes, Emacs already uses it, okay? And pretty much every other editor but VS Code. All right, so let's go to Tree Sitter right here. Scroll on down and just grab their installation line right here. And now we need to translate this. Leader PF, gonna open up my files, go all the way over to Packer, 
go down to the bottom and let's add this line right here. But this time let's go use, put that in there, jump over to this, erase that and call it run equals TS update. There we go. We've created the exact same thing, translated from plug, which is a different package manager, to packer, this one. I'm going to hit a beautiful SO, realize that I accidentally created a syntax error, go back here, erase that little squirrely brace, do another SO, do a little packer sync. Awesome. We now have tree sitter. And yes, you'll notice that every single time we install, we lost that. So now I can just go Lua color my pencils but this time call it like a function, and bam, we're back in the action. We got ourselves the waifu. Okay, everything's fine now. But we now need to initialize tree sitter because look at this. It's still, it's disgusting looking. We don't have any parsers or anything set up. We need to get stuff in here so it looks good. All right, so I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna go all the way down to this, and I'm just gonna copy this whole chunk of code because there's some things we're gonna need in here. So copy it, leader PV. Let's go back, let's go back, go after, go plug in, go tree sitter .lua. Hopefully you're starting to see a pattern here. I create my packer, I install the plugin I want, I go to after, I add the file that kind of configures it. It's pretty straightforward. Let's paste in what we got from the internet, best way to do anything. And I'm gonna add a couple items to this list because I also want help for the Vim help and I also want JavaScript just in case I need to do some JavaScript or some TypeScript because you never know, you just never know. Do I want to synchronously install it? No, auto install, true. Ignore, get the hell out of here. Erase that comment, I don't even know why I need it. Enable. Absolutely, we want those delicious highlights enabled. Get C out of there. Get this disable function out of there. We don't need it either. Do I want regex doing highlighting? No, I don't. Awesome. Let's do a little shout out. You'll notice that we start downloading parsers right away. These parsers will help give us beautiful color. And hopefully when it finishes, we'll just automatically see it all done. If not, we'll make it happen. All right, so it looks like it didn't do it. Let's do a little colon E. Are you ready? Well, that was boring. Let's, we'll quit and then we'll open it back up, okay? Let's go into after, plug in, tree sitter. Oh, that looks so much better. Look at all the colors. That is significantly better. If we go back to that packer file, tell me that does not look so much better. Before it was just like only the strings got anything. Everything else was just white. This is the power of tree sitter. But can I show you just one more small thing, something I just absolutely love? Let's go here and type in tree sitter playground neovim. And go to this top option. Let's scroll down the page. Okay, it's just installed, just like plug was. So I'm just going to grab this line, go all the way down here, paste it in, change plug to use, and call the function. Shout it out. Packer sync. It's going to install playground. I'm going to quit. Again, Lua color my pencils. Awesome. But now we get something amazing. I'm going to go like this. TS, here's all of our tree sitter functions, right? But I'm going to go TS playground. After restarting Vim, we got this new function, TS Playground Toggle. Look at what happens when I do that. We get all this information. What is this? Well, this is the actual AST that exists right now inside of my editor due to Tree Sitter. This is what you now get access to if you ever wish to do any plugins. It is mind blowing the power that is contained now within your editor and you get free access to it. There's three more plugins we need to install to make the Vim experience amazing. Let me show you them. So first one, of course, is Mine Harpoon. I just think it's glorious way to navigate files. So I'm gonna copy the URL up there, copy that, jump into here, paste that in, shout it out, Packer sync it. All right, so Harpoon is installed. Let's just open up any file within the after directory. Leader PV opens up that uh, netrw create harpoon.lua. Now we just need to do a quick configuration of harpoon. Let's go like this, local mark equals require harpoon.mark, copy, paste, replace a mark with UI. And then of course, now we just need to add some remaps. Now, before I do that, I immediately notice my waifu is gone. I'm scared, okay, we're back. Kevin hey. Hera became a member. Man became a member. Thanks for becoming YouTube members. I appreciate that, both of you. Blazingly appreciative. All right, so there's six remaps we need to do. Not too hard. A Vim key map set in normal mode. I want to be able to press leader A and add the current file that I'm on to Harpoon. Copy that. Let's then do, say, control E, and we can do UI toggle quick menu. And now I just need to be able to do my navigations. Jump over to here, do nav file 
one, but since I'm calling it as a function, I need to wrap it in a function. So let's just wrap that in a function really quickly. There we go. Copy, paste, F H R T, control A, paste, F H R N, control A, control A, paste, F H, ah, F H R S, control A, 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 boom, boom, boom. Shout this file out. Now we have a sweet navigation. When I press control E, Here's my harpoon menu. We have no files in here. Leader A. We now have a file we can go right back to, of course, which is our harpoon file. Let's load up our packer file. Let's add that to our harpoon list. Let's put that as number one. Now we should be able to switch back and forth as fast as we'd like between harpoon and packer. All right. Awesome. The next must-have plugin, of course, is undo tree right here. So I'm just going to copy the URL, jump back over here, copy, paste, paste it in, shout it out. Packer sync, beautiful. Harpoon my way back to Harpoon. Open up NetRW, create undo tree.lua. And now we need a remap. I need to be able to open up undo tree. Now I can't quite remember it, so let's just jump over here, scroll down. Here it is right here. Perfect. That's the one we want. I'm just going to paste that in and I'm going to go vim key map set normal mode leader u, of course. I want leader u. And then all we need to do now is just go vim command undo tree. Fantastic. Let's shout it out. Let's get our waifu back. And now if we press leader u, we can see everything we've done. So let's go back to Packer and go leader u. Now what you're going to see here is this little tree that's going on right here. So that means I should be able to see all the changes that we have recently made. So now if I go right here, this is a branch, right, in our undo history. So I could actually start editing this branch. And look at that. We actually have something moved around in here. That means I can actually go back to this one and start doing stuff in here as well. So if you ever have something that ends up being in the past, you can search for it via undo tree. It's very fantastic. Or if you ever accidentally make a change that you need to recover from, undo tree is just so good. All right, one more. I'm just going to copy. I'm going to paste. I'm going to go like this. T Pope Vim Fugitive. I know the URL at this point. Shout it out. Packer sync it. We have Fugitive. Again, get the waifu back, jump over to Harpoon, create a new file. Let's call it fugitive.lua. And now we just need to add a simple remap. Vim key map set in normal mode. If I press leader GS, stands for get status. That's how I think about it. I want to execute vim command get. Let's shout out this file, leader GS. I'm not in the git repository, so just to try this thing out, go cd neo vim get init awesome jump back here leader gs it's still not there because you know vim just didn't know i was there to begin with leader gs look at that we now have the ability to manipulate and do stuff in git at this point i think i have enough plugins to really be able to move i have my undo tree i have a fuzzy finder i have harpoon i have git integration i have a nice color scheme we're ready to rock all that's truly left is the lsp and we have an amazing vim setup all right to set up the lsp just go to lsp zero this thing is incredible i actually really like it and so we need to find the installation phase so just go right here with this huge amount of different plugin that it just is an amalgamation of everything you used to have to configure now just into a single plugin go back here jump all the way down to packer paste everything in i just have to format it so let's do one of those i still have eight space indenting we're going to change that here in a little bit now just do a little so and of course packer sync now we're going to install all these other plugins that are all related to lsp i'm going to quit that window get the waifu back jump back over to harpoon and let's create a new file called lsp lua and now we need to configure our lsp so the easiest way to do that is actually just to jump up here and just grab this. This will give you a preset LSP, everything set up, ready to rock just for you. I already have kind of some things that I like, so I need to kind of edit this setup a little bit. So I just pasted in mine. You don't need to see me set everything up. Here we go. So I have TS Server, ESLint, some Neko, Lua, and Rust Analyzer. Fantastic. Here are some remaps I like for when I'm doing my completion. I like Control PNN to go, you know, previous and next on my completion list. Control Y accepts it. Space starts the completion. I don't want any sign icons. Sign icons are just not for me. There we go. We set up it with our custom mappings that I have for me. This last one is a doozy, but it's really cool. So on attach happens on every single buffer that has an LSP that's associated with it. That means I'm going to have all these remaps only exist 
for the current buffer that I'm on. Of course, a buffer being the text we're editing right here. That means these remaps only live for the life of this buffer, which means that if I go to something that doesn't have a buffer, I can still use GD for jump to definition and it'll try to do Vim's best jump to definition effort. But if I do have an LSP, I'll use my LSP instead. This is a really handy thing to do. It might be a bit complex. I should probably take out this little print statement. I don't need help. I don't know what was going on there. But you get the idea. So now I'm just going to save this. And look at this. We're installing all these beautiful things. Awesome. We have everything installed. Now we're ready to rock. So I opened up my Advent of Code 2022. Notice I still have the hello from Primogen and hello. Let's go into here. Let's jump into, say, day one from 2022 Advent of Code. We should have our LSP automatically installed right here. Awesome, everything's getting highlighted, we're looking good. And I should just be able to start typing max. Look at this, you can see, all right, here's all the different things that are available. When I press this, we now see all the different things that are available for a U size integer, which means I can call sort by. Look at that, I can call sort on this. Oh, it's not a U size, it's this. Oh, this is a vector, vector of U size, my bad. But there we go, LSP setup, it was that simple. You didn't have to do all the remaps. You could have just simply stuck with these three lines that have the default NeoVim LSP Zero experience. That's pretty dang easy. It uses Mason under the hood if you're not familiar with Mason. Effectively, Mason allows you to just peruse packages and install anything at your will. Oh, you want Dino? Let's hit I. Boom, we are now installing Dino right now. Well, look at that, look at it go. It's that easy. And if you open up a file in which it detects, it will ask you, hey, do you want to install the language server associated with this file type? It's pretty dang convenient. At this point, my Vim experience is pretty much on point, but it is missing a couple things. Notice I have no line numbers, no relative line numbers. I'm still indenting at eight tab indents, right? So there's some basic sets that need to be set up for my Vim experience to be complete. And then I have some remaps that just really turbocharge my Vim experience. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is go back to my init. Let's remove this hello statement. We just don't need it in there. Let's go back, let's go into our init that's inside of the prime engine folder and let's remove that one as well all right so now what we need to do is add some sets to make my editor experience a bit better because like i want to automatically have line numbers i want them to automatically be relative so as i move i can kind of jump between the lines i want to be on like i want to be able to press eight up and know i need to go to that line all right so let's add a set.lua let's make sure we go back to our knit folder copy that jump over to this r and type in set I wanna make sure I have that set file. I should be able to use leader GD and notice that it jumps over here to set.lua since we have LSP zero installed. That's pretty handy. All right, so now it's just all my Vim sets I need to add. So instead of typing them, I just cut and paste them all in here. Let me go over them one at a time. I like a fat cursor. So right now when I press O and I go into insert mode, notice my cursor is really, really thin. Let's get out of insert mode. Let's type in shout out. Now notice some things just happened to my screen. But when I press O, I still have that fat cursor. It's just because I've been using Vim for just so long that it just feels normal and natural. Next, of course, line numbers. I want line numbers plus I want relative line numbers. So if I wanted to jump all the way down here to wrap, I just know to press 9. K or J, sorry, it's so ingrained in my head, I don't even remember the directions it goes. This next one just makes me have four space indents. Hey Vim, try to be smart about my indenting. I don't like line wrap. I don't want Vim to do any backups, but instead I want my undo tree plugin to have access to long running undos. That way I can undo things from days upon days ago. These next two are out of the world awesome. I do not like it when I search that it keeps the terms highlighted, but I love incremental search. Check this out. So if I go V I M, you'll notice that it's highlighting as I search. If I do dot star, you'll notice it does the whole thing. If I do equal space, you can see it kind of going. So that way, if you have some tricky searches or even search and replaces that you're doing, you can use incremental search to really guide you if you're doing the right thing. I like good colors. The only thing really interesting in here, of course, is scroll off, which means that as I go down, I'll never have less than eight characters towards the bottom, except for when I'm at the end of a file. So if we were to add a bunch of spaces down here, as I would go upwards, you'll notice that it never has eight or it never has less than eight. That's pretty cool, right? Fast update time. Great. Color column, great. And of course, I think this is just a better place to put my uh, leader key. It's with all the other sets. All right, so the last thing I need to do is just simply do all my high-powered amazing remaps. 
So let's again, let's go out here and let's create, ooh, let's just jump into remap and let's start putting them in right here. So I cut and paste my previous shortcuts that I used to have, but I realized that I had a convenience function for doing say a normal mode or remap. It kind of feels like the old Vim way. So let's actually do a really amazing find and replace right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this colon, percent sign s that means do this for the entire file i'm gonna do a slash and i'm gonna do a fighting one-eyed kirby except for i just do a single dot so it's gonna grab everything that has a dot right here then i'm gonna go nor map no recursive mapping opening parenthesis then i'm gonna replace that with vim key map set quotes slash one remember our first little match group that we did so notice that our v right here v nor map becomes right there oh yeah so good Look at that. Did it all for out the entire thing right here. Hit enter. Everything has been remapped properly. Even the X mode right there. Let's go. Let me go over my remaps that I use. They're quite amazing. So these first two are out of this world. They use the move command. And what they allow me to do is when I'm highlighted, I can go like this. I can move things around. And if there is an if statement, then guess what? We can take these and we can move them in and they'll automatically indent. How beautiful is that? If you're not familiar with J, J simply takes the line below you and appends it to your current line with a space. This one allows your cursor to remain in the same place even though you're applying line after line instead of putting your cursor way over at the end because every time I did it, my cursor would be way over here instead. I didn't want that. I wanted my J to stay in place. These next two are amazing. What they do is they allow Control D and U, which is half page jumping, to just keep my cursor in the middle. It helps me just look in one place as I move, and so it doesn't feel nearly as disorienting. These next two are also fantastic. It allows search terms to stay in the middle. So when I search for Vim, it'll just keep my cursor in the middle. These are for good times on Twitch. We're not gonna talk about that. This one's fantastic, so check this one out. So you know how sometimes you have, like, say, foo, and then you have bar, and you highlight and copy foo, and then you highlight barb, and you want to paste foo over it without losing your foo current paste buffer? I have leader p, and what that's going to do is it's going to delete my highlighted word into the void register and then paste it over because that means I still have foo preserved. How fantastic is that? For those that don't know Vim too well, what would have happened is this. I would have highlighted, pasted, and now I would just start pasting bar. And I didn't want that. I didn't want that. These next three are just awesome. Have to thank Asborn for these ones. Effectively, if I go leader Y, it now goes to this right here. You can see it right here, which is the plus register, which is also your system clipboard. So now if I go AP, yank this paragraph, what will happen is I can now press control V and I can jump over here and I can start pasting those in somewhere else. So I just have to do leader Y to yank into my system clipboard or just Y to have it only within Vim. That way I can have these two things separate because it really sucks when they're together. Some more of that like deleting to void register either in normal mode or in visual mode. I know you're going to make fun of me. There's one reason why I do this. That's because in vertical edit mode, if you just press control uh, C to exit, it won't actually save all these changes vertically. Instead, you have to press escape. It's the only thing that I can tell right now that's actually different between control C and escape. So I just put a remap because I'm so used to it. Okay, I picked up the habit from IntelliJ 10 years ago. Give me a break. Don't ever press capital Q. Honestly, it's the worst place in the universe. This right here is fantastic. This allows me to press control F and now I can switch projects. I can go to advent of code 2022. Look at that. We're back in our Rust project. Let's go back via Tmux previous session. Did you notice that little control A capital L? That's using Tmux. How fantastic is that? Oh my goodness. Of course, this is just quick fix navigation. If you're not used to the quick fix list, it's, out, it's just so good. This last one's like a pretty fun command. So if I go like this, space S, what it's going to do is it's going to give me this little menu right here. And now I can start replacing the word that I was on. Pretty cool, right? And I really do like this last one right here. To show you what it does, let's create one more file. Let's call it foo. Let's jump in here. And let's go octothorpe bang forward user bin env bash. Let's create a little bash script and let's go echo hello. And instead of doing that thing where you have to go, okay, 
Bash can up. Uh, looks like I'm installing uh, the Bash tree sitter parser. Thank you. So instead of going out to the command line and doing that chamoud plus X path to this, I just go leader X and what, oops, leader X. And what it's going to do, it's going to actually just make this into something that is executable. So when I go CD Lua the primogen LS, you'll notice that foo is actually executable. Pretty cool, huh? Let me delete that. Capital D deletes. Boom. And there you go. We've just set up Vim to be amazing. We have Git control. We have undo tree. We have LSP support. We have telescope fuzzy finding. We have Harpoon, the greatest file navigator ever. Tree sitter for amazing colors. Awesome remaps to just make your Vim experience creamy smooth. And of course, sane default sets for a nice editor experience. So I hope that you really like this. Again, press the like button, okay? This this was this was difficult. And also, if that find and replace was magic, say down in the comments below, let me know you want to see a video on just some sweet macro and search foo in Vim, and I can make it happen for you. Thank you. The name is the Primogen. If you haven't checked out kickstart.neovim, it's made by Telescopic Johnson. It's a great way to get started with NeoVim. It gives you pretty much all the things you need off the rip. And it's gonna have a lot of keys set up in a way that are more familiar, such as tab for scrolling through, autocomplete, etc. So give it a check, throw a star on. You can find the link down in the description.